we're going to get you going with our Portflow Analyzer program, assuming that you got a CD from us. Um, if you put the CD in the CD drive, you're going to come up with this installation wizard screen. There's a couple little uh, messages that will pop up first. And you bought the Portflow Analyzer, which is this button right here. But you can see you can install any of our products, and they'll all be demos, including the Portflow Analyzer you bought. However, because you bought the Portflow Analyzer, once it's installed, you'll call us up and get an unlock code for it, and it will take it out of demo mode. So anyway, let's go ahead and click on Portflow Analyzer. And this is wait a while. It'll take a while for the installation wizard to come up. And here it comes. And as you're going to see here pretty soon, we suggest you just accept the defaults on pretty much everything you do. So you're just pretty much going to click on Next. And it says that here. That we recommend you click on OK, Yes, or Next, and all the Next buttons. Under some situations, you might call us and we might say, well, don't do that. Like this is saying where it's being installed. Once in a while, we might ask you or you might want to browse to a different location. But generally, uh, let it go to the default location. Makes it much easier for us to troubleshoot on the phone <clears throat> should we have to do that. Um, in almost all situations, you want to do a complete install, especially... Um, if you've never had this program before. The refresh can be used if you've already got the program running and for some reason it's encountered a bug that you might have to fix. Then a refresh is in order. And the nice thing about the refresh is certain things like the history log of what you've been doing and stuff would not be changed and you probably would not have to call us to get a different unlock code. So, but in most all situations, a complete install is what you're gonna be doing. This is just, uh, again, most of this stuff is just boilerplate. So here we are actually installing the files. It's not going to take very long. And when you get done, you're going to go back to this installation wizard. Now, as you can see here, down here it says in pink, we got movie files here. <coughs> And we haven't updated to the Portflow Analyzer movie files, but there will be Portflow Analyzer movie files here also. And they're also available on our website. Um, well, obviously you found it if uh, you're watching this movie file. But for other products too, we got lots of movie files, product comparisons. So there's a lot of information on this CD to look at our other products. But right now we're done installing the Portflow Analyzer. So you just click on Stop. It says, are you sure you want to quit? And pretty much done. I should mention that when we do our demo movie files, we reduce the screen resolution as low as it'll go. Um, that makes the movie files small in size, easier to download, faster to download. Uh, but you can see here, I am my computer is filled with desktop icons. And normally, the newest program you've installed will be way over here on the right side, the last icon you see here. But I had to rearrange some things. And here's where the Portflow Analyzer desktop icon appeared. So now that you've installed it, you're going to have a new desktop icon, Portflow Analyzer V3.5. Just double click on it. <clears throat> Program's coming up. And you can see the first time you run it, it's going to ask you for a registered name. Now this name, unlike some of our smaller programs, won't appear on your printouts. We have a separate place for some two lines of text that can appear on your printouts, your company name and whatever. But you still, you want to put in a registered name that uh, you're going to be happy with in the future. So uh, just type in some name. I just typed in my name. And you notice it generated a registered code number here as you're typing it in. And I say, yep, that's the name I want to keep. <clears throat> it says now when you first start, do you want to load the test you're running when you last shut the program down? Now, when you get this, it's some program we were running here at the factory. So I would generally say, yes, do it. The reason being, and then you're also going to see these little tips pop up in the program here and there. Um, and it's telling you to start a new test, click on File, then Easy Start Wizard. Okay? If you click on here, you won't ever see that message again. You can turn them back on. There's a preference of turning them back on, so you want to go review them. But anyway... I'm going to say I don't want to see that again. 
and now you shouldn't see that. Now, unfortunately, this is a very minor thing. The very first time you run the program after installed, this message pops up twice. It's not a big deal, and that's why we haven't fixed it. But um, here is an example test of something we ran here at the at the factory. The reason it might be good to start up with something like this is you can try a lot of the features, like clicking on these tabs with the different cylinders and stuff. You can go make a graph or whatever is here. And you get a little bit from more. You got something to work with when you first get the program. You can click on file. You can open other, again, another tip message. We could turn it off here if we don't ever want to see it again. But these are things that we think are pretty important for you to know. And, you know, a lot of people, you're not going to scour the manual, but these are things that we think uh, you should know. So do read them. And if you're not going to read them this time, then don't say that. Just let it go. But when you first get the program, there's two different folders that um, for storing tests. The examples folder, and here are example tests of uh, things that uh, we put in that we think might be nice for you to see. We got a Superflow 300 to 600. This happens to be a Superflow 110. This here is a, from a Superflow 1020. Uh, this is our black box on a Superflow 600. And we even have an easy flow example. So we have a, a nice array of different flow benches and different types of data loggers for you to look at tests created by them. And they make for nice examples. Um, maybe you want to open one of them up if they match your setup. Open one of these up, and it might make for a nice template so you can see how you set up your, your bench specs and stuff. And then we have the My Tests folder, which is our default fold for putting tests that are not considered examples. A folder is a group of tests. Uh, it's very common Windows terminology, but you can see if we click on the examples folder, there's a whole bunch of tests, and these all have something in common. What's, what do they have in common? Is that there were examples that we provided. Uh, a good choice for uh, a folder, and you can create new folders. You can see here, and there's another thing I'll show you in a second. You can create new folders. Typically, a folder is something that might be like for a particular customer you do work for. Maybe Johnson is a customer. A particular engine, the 351 Windsor files versus the, the 302 Ford files, something like that. But some organization that you should come up with to organize your tests, you don't have to do it right now. And uh, all tests that, um, that you've not provided a folder name for will go into this My Test folder. So anyway. Uh, but this is, uh, you can see here we got the Sportsman 2 here, which is this test right here. This is the one that happened to be opened up on the main screen. Again, another tip message. But because you got just bought this, now this program will run for 10 days without you doing anything. It's what we call our demo period. And if you downloaded this free off the internet, you would still get a 10-day demo period on this particular computer. After 10 days, it shuts itself off completely. Uh, not completely. It shuts it off to the point you can't do any work, but you can still get into the program enough so that you can unlock it. So six months from now, uh, you can still unlock the program. And the way you unlock the program, when you click on File, Unlock Program Options. And here's the information that you're going to email to Performance Trends or call us up on the phone that we're going to need. And a lot of customers just do a print screen, get a screenshot of this and send it. Then we have everything we need. But what we're going to want to give you the correct unlock number is this registered code number that got created from this registered name and this computer hardware number. So these three things are what we're going to need to know to give you the right unlock code. This code number to extend demo, used very rarely, um, but it's used once in a while. And, and we'll tell you when you use it. Some people want to extend the demo, and once in a while we let people do that. Let some, some students working at something on some college, at some college or something. We might extend the demo period. But anyway, so call us up with these three numbers, and we'll give you the correct unlock number. Now, I've got the number for this combination using this information here to unlock this into the basic version. Now, the, the program comes in two different versions, a basic with less features, a little bit, it's cheaper, 
um, and it's less confusing because there's fewer things you can do with it. And then the pro version. And the difference between the two, this, this exact same program can be converted either into a basic or pro depending on what number we give you. And I'm going to type in the number for the basic version. I'm not giving away any secrets here because it's very unlikely you're going to have a computer hardware number of this for this combination and stuff. Program unlock and set to basic mode. As you can see here, certain things are gone. There used to be an engine option up here that's gone now. And uh, anyway, there are some features that are gone. Head specs, much more simplistic than what's uh, available in the, in the full pro version. And I forget what was here, but this thing here is a bit not there. And if you do overlay graphs, you can only add one additional graph here to put to overlay over this head here. This head, this is uh, four intakes and four exhausts for my particular head. But you could put another head on top in basic. Another tip message, and like I said, those tip messages are important. But let's. Uh, show you what happened and there's a lot of uh, differences between the basic and the pro uh, if we click on preferences you're going to see there's a lot of things there's a lot of area here there, there's some missing things here <clears throat> now we go to file unlock and again you would give us this information and we'd give you if you bought the pro version a different number See, unlocked and set to professional mode. And it's just saying that uh, this is a little important thing that if you had updated from version 3.0 to 3.5, it's saying that it looks like you got a 3.0 installed. Do you want me to copy all the old stuff over to the new 3.5? And you could say yes. I'm not going to do it because it takes quite a while. But anyway, you can also do this over here where there's some import, export, backup, and restore from backup. There's a lot of things here. But anyway, now we got the pro version. You can see we now we got some engine specs here, and again a tip message that you can do some more detailed analysis in your program with these engine specs. Uh, you click on heads, you can see there's a lot more head information here. You can do there's head details, lots of stuff here. And again, those tip messages are popping up because we think this is some pretty important stuff for you to know. If we're going to make a graph here, we now have a history log. Where we can, this history log is blank because we just got the program, but you could include several. In this column, you put a yes in that graph column, and you could add several different tests and overlay them uh, here and have many graph lines or averages from different heads or whatever. So there's just a whole lot more features going on in the pro version. Another thing you can do is you can click on help and display pro versions features here, and then a list of things kind of comes through and illustrate what is the major differences between the basic and the pro version. Most of our customers do get the pro version. I bet 80 to 90 percent buy the pro version. So this is a little introduction to um, the Portfolio Analyzer and I encourage you to watch the other movies which will get into detail and in all these different features.